Hey, I'm Abigail Metch. I'm a multimedia journalist reporter and news is everything to me. Let me take you on a journey through some of my favorite stories. Jessica, the meeting really had two purposes. One, of course, was to offer each other support. The other was to brainstorm ways to get guns off the street. Paul, it has been so cold in central Illinois. The last time the temperature was above freezing was back on February 4th. WCI Freeze, Abigail Metch is live in Champaign. Abigail, Illini fans have waited a long time for this. Jessica, today I had a fan tell me that you can literally feel the excitement in the air, and he is so right. Places around the U of I campus were totally packed today. Many lifelong fans say they've been waiting for this moment. They thought it would happen last year, but then the tournament was canceled. They started to lose hope. Now the Illini have another chance to win it, and people are feeling optimistic. I think we're going to see them go pretty deep in the uh, tournament. Uh, you know, I don't want to jinx it either, but when you see them play, it's, it's hard to imagine anything but success for these guys. They worked hard for it and they deserve it. So it's going to be, I think, a lot of fun. Bar and restaurant owners around campus say they expect to see large crowds of orange and blue as long as the Illini keep winning. And fans also tell me that they are ready to keep cheering the Illini on for the next two weeks until they bring that trophy home. In Champaign, Abigail Metch, WCIA 3, your local news leader. All right, Abigail, thanks. So no one's in the house. There is a, a pet that's unaccounted for. Nobody was hurt in a Clinton house fire today, but it was just one of many problems caused by the windy weather. Good evening, I'm Jessica Coons in for Paul and Jennifer. Trees and power lines came down, signs were knocked over, and you could probably feel the wind if you were on the road. Tonight, thousands in central Illinois are still without power. WCI3's Abigail Metch is live in Champaign for us. So Abigail, looks windy out there right now. Just Jessica, I am basically blowing away out here. Today we followed power companies from county to county. I spoke to one person who said she just hoped the linemen got a lot of sleep last night because of how busy they were going to be today. I'm just, I'm just in tears. It's terrible, terrible. This was the scene after a house in DeWitt County caught on fire. We got dispatched for a report of a tree down with live lines on a house and the structure was uh, on fire. The heavy wind and rain caused this tree to fall and snap the power lines across the street. When firefighters got to the house, they ran into problems and had to call for extra help. We called Amron immediately upon arrival on scene. Amron was able to shut off power in the neighborhood so fire crews could put the fire out. Our firefighter safety was our top priority, so we elected to wait until the power was out. Then we started extinguishing it now that it's out. Amron was also called to help in Pyatt County, where several trees had knocked down power lines. The harsh weather kept them busy, restoring power to thousands of people across central Illinois. Meanwhile, in Champaign County, a semi-truck crashed on the I-74 and the soybeans it was carrying spilled across the road. It was a long day for all of the crews, but one of them told us they were ready for it. Power lines is always uh, an issue when you have a storm. Um, we're not, we're always ready, but we're not anticipating anymore. Uh, but with high winds comes those issues. It's still windy into tonight, but our WCIA weather team says the worst of this is over and there is sunshine on the way. Yes. In Champaign, Abigail Metch, WCIA 3, your local news leader. There's been a series of auto thefts, but cars aren't being taken. Instead, catalytic converters have been ripped off. WCIA 3's Abigail Metch is in the newsroom. So, Abigail, this is not isolated to one community. Paul, it's helping in several counties. Mount Zion's police chief told me it's too soon to tell if those counties are connected, but he thinks word has gotten around that someone is buying them. We're not sure why. It's starting to happen, you know, recently. People in Mount Zion have had their catalytic converters stolen off of their cars. The police chief says it's happening when no one's around. But they've been occurring overnight, the ones that we've had. He says it's a simple task for thieves to take them. As far as them getting the catalytic converter off your car, if it's bolted onto the exhaust system, um, it's pretty easy to get off, frankly. Uh, and you can do that without making a lot of noise. It's happening to people no matter what kind of car they drive. I think it's just more targets of opportunity. If the vehicle is easily accessible, it's parked in the street or in a parking lot somewhere where it's not well lit, um, then that it's more, I think, target of opportunities than it is, you know, which model or make or model of vehicle. And if yours is stolen, you'll know it.
if you go out to your car and you start it up and it's very loud, um, if, if, if the catalytic converter's been stolen, it'll be almost like the sound of a race car. It would be, you'd know immediately. It's also happening around the University of Illinois campus. Most recently, to a university truck. There was one this week and then three in February. Um, and there's not any one location where, where we're seeing these reported. They've been all over campus in Champaign, in Urbana, and there's even one on campus property in Savoy. Police say the converters can be valuable. But I do know there is a scrap value for those. I, there's some precious, precious metals in those catalytic converters. I spoke with several auto shops today. They told me the converters range in price from $20 to $2,000. They say it really depends on what kind of metal is in them, and platinum is worth the most. In the newsroom, Abigail Metch, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Well, I play pretty good. I play deep. Decent. As long as I can, I'm going to play. And he means it. He tees off three times a week. What's so impressive about it? Guy Ellis is playing golf at 100 years old. I'm astounded, and he doesn't plan on stopping anytime soon. WCI3's Abigail Metch is with us now, so you got to watch him play today. You were totally impressed. Jennifer, I mean, how many 100-year-olds are playing a sport and playing that sport really well, might I add? He credits most of his success to the friends he's made out on the course. I enjoy every day. That I'm to see all these buddies. I got lots of friends. Guy Ellis and his friends are regulars at Red Tail Golf Course in Decatur. They've been doing this for decades. Guy and I have been friends for uh, 40 years. He started when he was 60, and I played with him that year. And we've played together, not totally, but uh, we've played together a lot ever since. Ellis says friends like Alan Price motivate him to keep playing at 100 years old. Everyone is pulling for me every day. And they all know that I'm going for 105. And they all urge me on. They, they all claim I do them so good. But they don't know they do a lot for me. Keep me going. And even at the century mark, his friends say he's hard to keep up with. That was a good job. He's, he's got such a sharp mind for, he's got memory a lot better than mine. He's an amazing, he's just an amazing guy. Not to mention. And he's pretty good at golf too. And the secret to doing this? Well, to me it's simple. I try not to worry about a damn thing. Today I asked him what he plans to do after he turns 105. He told me he'll sit down and think about it when the time comes. Back to you. All right. By Memorial Day, we should have enough vaccine for everyone that wants it. Great news as a variant of the coronavirus is on the rise in Champaign County. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. And I'm Jennifer Roscoe. About half of the positive COVID cases are B117 variant. WCI 3's Abigail Match is live in our newsroom. So Abigail, I was vaccinated. Am I protected against this variant as well? Jennifer, I have good news for you. I talked to public health today and they say you are good to go. It doesn't matter which vaccine you get, they are all effective against the B117 variant. B117 seems to be um, pretty stable as far as uh, the vaccine that we're all getting right now with sort of the original strain, the antibodies that are produced through the vaccination are attacking that um, virus pretty effectively in preventing disease. The B117 variant was first discovered in the UK last fall. Now it's made its way to central Illinois. Uh, basically, uh, all viruses mutate um, as they inf get into folks and infect individuals, and it, they have little changes in their genome or their viral DNA um, that creates a mutation, which in these instances for COVID are, are being referred to as variants. This new variant is more dangerous than the original coronavirus we saw last year. They saw uh, several changes, mutations in the virus that make it a little bit more contagious and uh, the data is showing that's a little bit more um, deadly as far as severity of disease. So that's a little bit concerning with this one. But health officials say we could stop it from spreading. It's pretty much the same protocol as far as prevention. So, you know, maintaining the social distancing um, and masking up. And, of course, getting vaccinated. CUPHD says positive cases have decreased to 30 per day. Half of these are the B117 variant. But the variant is spreading slowly. 
because more people in the community are getting their shots. We're not seeing a, a spike with the more transmissible variant, which tells us that there is a good pocket of the population that's vaccinated and protected. The health department says they're watching for a spike in cases after some people traveled for spring break. Jennifer. All right, Abigail, do we have any type of update? I know they want so many people vaccinated. What about supply? Well, right now they do not have enough of the vaccine, but the health department does say that they'll have a shot for every person who wants one by Memorial Day. Okay, put that on the calendar. Thank you.